facts and observations. For more than 20 years, there's been just one place to turn for unparalleled coverage of the Saratoga Racing Meet, Capital OTB, and OTB TV. A day at the track isn't complete without a night at the horseshoe. Great food, hot music, and cold drinks. So why go downtown when all the action's just across from the track? The Horseshoe Inn at the corner of Nelson and Gridley. Welcome back to Racing Across America on Closing Day, live from Saratoga. Happy to be joined now by Karen McLaughlin. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. And a uh, nice weekend capping what has been a nice uh, latter part of the meet. You, you did okay early in the meet as well, but I parsed it out. Uh, up until August 21st, you had seven wins, which is a perfectly good meet. But since August 21st, this is like the last week and a half. Nine wins. Nine of your 16 in the past week and a half, including the Woodward. A any explanation for that or just a... a you know, a melding of your horses in the condition book at this particular time. Yes, most of them had run earlier in the meet. A lot of them finished second, third, fourth, came back to win. It just worked out perfect. That They stayed on the turf when we needed them to, and they trained well in between. So we had a great finish. Yeah, it, it really was a great finish. I said about a week and a half or so ago, it seemed like you, you put a couple of, of maiden winners together, and it seemed like you were on a roll, and all the other public handicappers recognized it too, and it has continued. We'll take a look at the big race uh, this past Saturday, the Woodward. We're going to watch Alpha come down the stretch. And I have to ask you that the obvious question was the strategy in the paddock to say, say to Johnny, gun it out of the gate. We talked about it, and they just, I just said to him, if he breaks clean, try and throw some mud in the face of the other horses, like Painter's it was the other speed. And he broke fabulous, and I think Painter didn't break very well. So instead of watching the stretch on, maybe the break was the whole difference. But then Johnny rode him very well, and he was game at the end to win. It was a great win for our whole team. Yeah, we actually watched the race a couple of times, uh, focusing on that start. And, it, you know, it was obvious on the replay, but it was, it was obvious also standing there watching. And I was standing down in the clubhouse with a bunch of people watching on the big screen. As soon as he got out, people were like, oh, that's, 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 that's setting things up very, very well for yeah. Al. But, right. uh, a little bit of a horse for a course with him, or has it just worked out that way? Well, he, yes, it seems like he broke his maiden here, and he won the Jim Dandy here, the Travers here. So obviously he loves Saratoga. And the blinkers on was was great. I probably shouldn't have taken him off from Godolphin and put him on for the Godolphin mile, and he ran very well. But we just thought since he won the Travers without him, we took him off. But it looks like it was a mistake, so we'll leave him on from now on. How, how'd he come out of it, and what's the game plan from here? He came out of it in great shape. He was really bright that night right after the race. We stopped by to see him. He was happy, very happy. Obviously, the Jockey Gold Cup, September 28th at Belmont, a mile and a quarter, is the logical next step. I still have to talk to Simon. Christopher about it, but that's probably what we're looking at. And that's shaping up to be a barn burner for a race, too. Uh, I ask everybody, how'd you get into the racing game? I was born and raised in Lexington, Kentucky, and it was either UK basketball or horses. <laughs> and I wasn't tall enough or good enough to play basketball, so I went with the horses, and I'm living my dream. Yeah, it, it, it has certainly been uh, a ride since, and I understand. Well, first, uh, uh, you came out of the D. Wayne Lucas School, and, and you know now he's got a string. He's, he's pared things down from folks who maybe aren't familiar with him in the early days. He was kind of a pioneer of the separate strings around the country, and you were part of you know those early days. What, what kind of education did you pull out of the, the D. Wayne Lucas School? Well, I went to University of Kentucky for one year, and I was one and done long before Calipari made it cool. <laughs> but then when I went to work for Wayne seven years, just everything that you learned from him was useful in our game today and Todd Pletcher worked with me he was my foreman as I was an assistant in New York for seven years I was an assistant but Todd worked with me for three years so we we all worked well together and Wayne taught us so much he was a great teacher and a coach and a horseman yeah he actually started out as a teacher I believe yeah he actually was a teacher and a coach before right, he got into exactly. it so he always helped us with everything um, and I understand from some bio information you were a, a jockey's agent for a while and a jockey's agent to a pretty good jockey too yes Chris Antley I had his book in 92 and 93 here and we did very well and he was great to work for and, and it was uh, educational for me also and uh, you know I mentioned uh, the things kind of turned around about a week and a half or so ago um, and we're gonna pull up some video here of a maiden victory Almura gets it done first time starter five and a half on the turf uh, runs runs away pretty easily and does it at 22 to 1 
came back the next day, and it was like the betters weren't paying attention. Sky Painter, similar breeding. That one gets it done at 8 to 1. And then, again, to me, this is kind of where that hot streak started out. Almira, Sky Painter, what's up next for them? We'll look at the Miss Grillo at Belmont early October and or at Kingland there's one and the Alcibiades is there also. So we might split them up that way, but they're both hopefully great at stake fillies. And, uh, you know, it's certainly a nice debut from both of them, as I say. Get, the first one gets away. Longest shot in the field, though. What we just saw, 22 to 1. Yeah. And then the next day, the better still weren't kind of plugged in. Got away at 8 to 1. Uh, the first winner was from Shadwell. The second one was for Darley. For folks who look in the past performances and aren't familiar with the story, Godolphin, Shadwell, Darley, what's the brief explanation on how all those are all related? Um, Darley is Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the ruler from Dubai, as is Godolphin. So when they move up to the grade ones, they like to have them on the Godolphin colors and team. Shadwell is a brother that's actually two years older, and he's also part of the ruling family in Dubai, Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum. And I've been with both of them for 20 years, so it's great to work for the Maktoum family. And, and you spent some time over in Dubai, correct? Yes, I lived there for 10 years, and it was great. It's a great place, and, and, and the kids were there for a few years, and my wife, and we all loved it. And uh, um uh, you, you also have a great team and a team that's been with you for a long time so you want to give give some shout outs to the, the team that's behind yes, it? Yes, my brother Neil is up here at Saratoga all summer and then to Florida and his wife Trish and they do a great job. Neil's been you know basically responsible for Alpha's most of his life and uh, Art Magnuson who's from Clifton Park has also oh, been is with he really? 20 years and he's at Belmont now and uh, he's been a you know a, like a brother and uh, he's still with me so we all work well together but he's at Belmont year round but both of them were in Dubai for 10 years also so we have a great team very good and uh, before I let you go I always like to ask people also particularly when you're up here playing at the highest level of the game got to be a lot of fun to come to Saratoga because I always look at this as the big stage you're playing every day in front of 20,000 people that's got to be a lot of fun it is great and it's great racing probably the best racing in the world to me the, the days of racing are great and the nights are long. You have to learn to sleep fast up here because you, you don't get that much sleep, but it's great fun. I like that. And, and what's your game plan from here? Just the nuts and bolts of when, when do you move, when do the horses start to move and all? We've moved all of them out except the Darley and Godolphin will be at Green Tree with my brother Neil. Art Magnuson has the other 35 at Belmont, and we'll keep going enter up Saturday and keep going at Belmont. Very good. Kieran, again, it's just a fabulous meet capped by the uh, grade one victory in the Woodward this past Saturday with Alpha. But as they say, over the past nine days, you've just, just been on fire. So keep it up at Belmont. The Belmont racing is certainly as high quality as is up here at Saratoga. So again, uh, great work up here at Saratoga. Good luck on the rest of the year, uh, Belmont and beyond. Kieran McLaughlin, Thank thanks you for very joining much. us. Thank you. Kieran McLaughlin, we'll take another break. When we come back, it's going to be John Signor, president of Capital OTB TV, as we wrap things up, turn off the lights here, live from the backstretch at Saratoga for Saratoga, Saratoga 2002.